Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and um, I've been working on this telegram scheduler a little bit. Uh, it looks like that it was um, fairly popular. I mean fairly popular for those who look at these type of uh, node red stuff. So I get some comments and so I think it was uh, beneficial for quite a few of you. And I was thinking that okay I did this scheduling it's simple you can do that but what if if I want to do something more for for example what's what if uh, I want to reschedule something so um, I schedule something to turn on it turns on and that reminds me that I I want to reschedule that because that should should happen tomorrow as well so I did that and um, I mean, I just figured out a way how to do that. And I think that is going to be useful for a lot of different scenarios in the future. So what has happened now is, uh, well, I just quickly created some schedules that execute now. And as you can see, I, I, I configured this um, relay to turn on at uh, 9.54 and then it just happened. So I get this message, schedule executed. And now what I said, it's the, probably the easiest way to reschedule this one. If I wanted to run it again, if I could reply to this message. Oh, the another one just got executed as well. So let me just reply to this message. So if I reply, I can just reply with anything. So I'm just going to type re. And then you, we get a message uh, uh, saying rescheduled. So it is able to pick up this scheduling and then just basically do it again. So you don't have to type the whole thing again. Don't have to select it. And, uh, and I'm guessing it can be used for a lot of different things. Uh, so actually, I'm, I was thinking that maybe when there is a schedule created like this one, I can, I mean, it's, it's fairly easy to just create a simple schedule, like, you know, three different steps. But maybe if you want to do it as a reoccurring schedule, maybe you can reply to this one and you get like further options um, or, you know, something different. If you have any ideas, just let me know in the comment section. So this is the kind of mechanism that I was thinking about, which is simple enough. It doesn't take a lot of typing and it, it doesn't take a lot of uh, uh, thinking uh, how the, you know, how these messages needs to be used. So I think this reply is, is probably going to be quite useful. And the way this is happening is, um, is, is quite universal. So as I said, I think I would be able to use it for a lot of different things. So let me just um, show you a few things. So first of all, what I did is whenever we are sending out messages, I just need to zoom out a little. So I have this big, massive uh, sender node that everyone, is link everyone links to. Um, the send response, which is just a, um, a, where is it, telegram sender node. And then it goes into a function node. And this function node is looking for certain things in the message. So in the, in the message that I sent to telegram, if it has a message.save or, yeah, a, a message.save is set to true, then this knows that this is something that I need to save because then we should support uh, re responding to this message. So, and everything gets put in the session data. So I thought that uh, there is three things that I'm going to save. I'm going to save a content, which can be any object that I want to save and I want to rate later reprocess. I want to send, uh, what, yeah, uh, sorry, I want to store a context. So that's the, uh, like in my case, it's the scheduler. So the scheduler, uh, so this is a scheduler type message and it has a content, which is the current schedule. So I don't have to, you know, look it up or parse it from the text. And also it has a, as a, you know, a safe time because I was thinking that, you know, after one week I can get rid of these because, you know, if you don't remember them from, for a week, then probably it's too late anyway. So. These are the th these are the ideas. So when you reply to this one, um, then I can uh, check whether the original message because whenever you reply in Telegram, in uh, in the message there is a we are going to see in the code. So I think reply to message there is an object and it has there is a, a message ID. So here I can save uh, as you can see it here. So I. 
uh, session ID messages. Yeah, so I save uh, all this information um, under our object where the object name is the send message ID. And let me just jump to the context. So you can see the session data and my ID. And under messages, you would be able to see that I have saved three different messages already. So as I was just testing this, and each of them has a context. So it was all schedulers, and there is a save time. So this is what I can check if it's old or not. And then in the context, I'm going to save. Well, I, in the context, I just included the um, the actual schedule. So these are the details that I store in the other global variable as well about the schedule. The only thing I added so far since the last code is I added this UUID, which is just a unique ID, which I might need to use in the future, but it doesn't have any significance at the moment, but it just gets included. So here, uh, when, um, when I send this uh, schedule executed message, I include all the details of the schedule. So I can just pick this up. And if you reply to that, I can just put it into the schedules again, because, you know, if you are rep responding to that, it's already past that time when it was uh, set to schedule, for example, uh, 2155. So I, just, I can just straight put it back to the, uh, to the global variables where I store the schedules and it will get picked up the next day. So it's very simple. So this is the saving part. Uh, so that's a function node which goes right after the main uh, Telegram sender. And also if uh, whenever the Telegram sender, uh, so whenever the Telegram sender sends out a message, so this is the, the uh, this is the, the part where I send out the um, schedule executed messages. So you can see here that uh, schedule executed. So this, this is the original code and I have added this one here. So save the message to support reply. So the save is true. The save content is a message.payload which contains this whole, this entire scheduling data that you can see here. And of course the context is a scheduler. And I've also included one more variable for the save content, which is a step uh, because um, here I thought that I should be able to support responding to uh, or replying to a schedule executed message. And maybe I should also support responding to the uh, schedule created message. So this is what I mentioned before. It's like creating it as a recurring or modifying it to be a recurring one. And I thought that this is how I'm going to use the step. Uh, so I include the step so the code knows that whether this is a executed one or a scheduled one. Because I think the rest is pretty much going to be the same, so the rest of the object. And as you can see, it's, uh, you know, these, these values are fa fairly generic, so you can have another process where the context is different, uh, and, I mean, you can have a separate content that needs to be stored. It can be whatever information that uh, you need in order to pick that up later, whenever the response is processed. So that's the, that's the scheduler sending part that has been modified. And I have also done, okay, that was, that was the saving. I have also included some changes to the language processing. And actually there are two different changes here. One is I have implemented the session timeout. Yeah, it, which is this one. So here I have, uh, there was already some code here and I just added some extra code which uh, basically it's here. It checks the current time minus the, uh, the session last seen. And if it's more than a timeout value, then um, it would just get deleted. So um, it would not remember the session anymore. So it would treat the response, sorry, it would treat the message as just like a general message, not part of the, the session anymore. And you can specify the timeout value here. So it should be one minute. So these are the steps where, you know, what is the device that you want to schedule, what time. So if you don't respond within one minute, then it would just, it would just exit and ignore. I think that's probably reasonable enough. Maybe you can just create it for like higher, like, I don't know, 10 minutes. So you just do 10 times and then uh, the timeout will be 10 minutes. So that's one I have done. 
I have also included a piece of code here, which uh, it, uh, it's going to delete all the store messages. So these objects that I told about. So I, as I said, it would use the save time. And here I have uh, specified an expiry period of one week. So again, if the save time, the current time minus the save time is bigger than the expiry period, then it's going to delete the messages. Um, to be honest, I might need to tweak this a little bit. I, I, something was uh, working funny, and it maybe this is responsible for that. I'm not sure yet. And this part is also important because this handles the reply. So what it does, it's uh, it looks at the looks at the incoming message from Telegram, and then it checks whether it has this reply to message uh, property. Uh, yeah, I turned off the debugging, but um, you know, besides the payload and uh, like the message dot you know payload and the message dot original message, there is also a reply to message uh, object in it, and in that reply to message, there is a message ID. Yeah, reply to message dot message ID. So that refers to the message that it, uh, you were replying to. And that is going to be matched against these numbers here that we are uh, storing in the session. So this is going to do all these like, okay, is it, uh, uh, you know, does that message that you reply to matches with anything that is stored in the session? And if it does, then it knows that, oh, okay, this is a context scheduler. So it will create a context. Yeah, so it puts the context into the command. So it would direct the message all the way down to the to the correct function node and then it also creates a session data uh, which is uh, what we what we have used in the previous one just to store information between each of the steps and uh, it would just set the step to 99 so anything which is a reply it's going to be step 99 and the content of the what got stored previously it gets put into the content so again this should be a general way of handling replies and this would make sure that your reply would get automatically directed into the correct function node and it will not get picked up as a generic text or command that you that you are typing otherwise so in this case because uh, I put the command the message is going to get ignored by pretty much everyone until it goes to the scheduler so obviously it will check. Um, oh, I added this uh, UUID function in the top. It's not the best one um, because it still uses the random, but I think it's going to be good enough for our use. So it uh, is going to check the command scheduler, which got set just above. And then it's going to go all the way down because the step is set to 99, which is, oh yeah, it's all the way down here. So this is a reply to an earlier scheduler message. And then we check what the step is. So this is execute schedule. And this is the only thing which is implemented at the moment. And then basically I just, uh, you know, the new schedule is pretty much just the content. I generate the new UUID. I delete the step because the step was just, uh, you know, for me to new, know what happens. And, um, and I also, mark this outgoing message to be stored because th this is the one where I thought that you know maybe this can be used to reschedule or make it reoccurring or you know update the schedule to make it reoccurring so that's the that's pretty much the same so I flag it for saving I put the content the sudden uh, step is going to be new schedule which I haven't implemented yet and then the context is scheduler and then I just print, okay, this got rescheduled, so I know that this is a rescheduling. And uh, yeah, I just did the context and that's it. And uh, you can see here that the step is new schedule. So I should have another if, if statement here on the new schedule, which I haven't done yet. So this is the one I'm trying to figure out what would be the best way to use that or how would it would be the best way to use that. And then, uh, uh, you know, normally you have, uh, if this was execute schedule, then it will return here. There is going to be another one for new schedule, which will have its own return. And if, if it's basically not being handled, then 
I just print that the function is not supported yet. So that's like a fallback option. And also a little bit further up, when I schedule the message using the normal process, which would be like um, schedule created, this one, uh, I also mark this to save as a new schedule. So technically I can respond to this one. Uh, and we get the message function is not supported yet because this goes out with a step, where is it? New schedule, which I haven't implemented here yet. So yeah, so that's, um, yeah, and I mentioned here that um, if you want, you can also check what the response was. So I think, um, you know, this could be used to also you know, perform different things that you might want to do in a res uh, when you are responding. So when you are responding, you could respond with keywords. So like, I mean, if a schedule executed, I can't really think of anything else you want to do with it other than reschedule. So this is why I haven't included any um, check on what got typed as, um, as, as the word or instructions. But then if you want to do this one, not this one, the schedule created, so if you right click and reply, maybe this is where it can be, uh, I don't know, like every day. And that gets turned into a reoccurring schedule for every day or something like that. So I'm not really sure how to do that and what would be the best way of uh, letting the user know what are the different options. Maybe I'm thinking that in, in this one, I also include in the message like, reply and then just put keywords there that you can reply with um, so you know what what are the different options even if you haven't used this function for a long time so something like that uh, that's probably going to be coming in the future but uh, yeah probably rescheduling um, sorry turning the schedule into like a reoccurring schedule is one and of course modification could be something so maybe you created something but then you realize you want to delete it so i'm thinking what would be the best way of supporting that i'm not really sure at the moment of course you can come here and then you know maybe right click and delete maybe that would be an easy one to get rid of this one if it's already created and not executed yet so these are the options that I have in mind, but I think it's um, it looks like a good enough framework to be used for other things in the future. So that will be all for today. As I said, I'm going to include, uh, well, I'm just going to create another article on my wiki page for these changes. And uh, it's just going to be, you know, JavaScript code changes for the various things that I have added. So it's going to be let me zoom out. So it's going to be the new node to save the change as it comes out of the Telegram sender. The changes to the scheduler, um, well, the function node after the scheduler. Of course, the changes to the, the main scheduler function and also changes to the language processing, which does all the recognition of the response and you know setting the context and that sort of stuff. So I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.